Greetings, and welcome to Quantum Healing with Candace. I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world, while well as expanding into new realms, new ways of thinking and being. It is based upon the foundation of the late, great Dolores Cannon's work and our continued contact with her from beyond the veil. So thank you, Dolores, for continuing to encourage us to explore new directions. Also, thanks to Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling at In5D.com for making this show possible. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my wonderful supporters of the show and this work and all of my In5D friends, my New Earth Journey friends, my Facebook friends, QHHT practitioners, and of course, clients. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material for this show. I'm a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and had the honor and distinct privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice of quantum healing and my consulting and coaching services at NewEarthJourney.com. And I'd like to mention I'm now offering two new remote quantum healing services. One is Quantum Healing Meditation Process, a personalized and completely unique to you downloadable MP3 file. I'm also offering a new long distance quantum energy healing service that you can think of as something similar to distance Reiki. Call or email me about details. And lastly, before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores Cannon's method of quantum healing, or for those who have trained with Dolores in the past, take note of this website, DoloresCannonQHHT.com. There you will find an easy-to-use photo listing of practitioners, their blogs, YouTubes, and published books. And also for the serious practitioner of Dolores' method, her original Quantum Healing Support Forum, which has eight years of abundant resources. And again, you can find all of that at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. This show supports those who are dedicated members of our support forum community. Hi, everyone. Today is July 21st, 2016. And I've been very busy being a nurse to many beings in my family, and I haven't been doing any shows for a while. Um, I was on a show with Andrew Fisher uh, yesterday, the Nature of Reality show, but I haven't done any of my own shows uh, really since um, the first part of May of this year because of all the different things going on in the world and, and in my life. Uh, but I'm so happy to be back, and I'm very excited today to welcome uh, a wonderful, uh, an amazing, and very interesting person uh, that I have known for quite some time, but haven't spoken to in this way until this morning uh, for me and this afternoon for her. And I'd like to welcome now Ikramini from, and how do you say your last name, please? Nuri. I- Ikramini Nuri, and she is an Iraqi born. Swedish um, resident right now, and she is like a jack of all trades. She uh, just talking with her briefly before the show this morning. Uh, she's telling me all the different things she does. She uh, and we are talking today, of course, because she practices Dolores's method of quantum healing, uh, and she does so in Europe and in uh, the Islamic states in in Arabic. And there's so much to talk about, but she is so talented in so many ways she she just before i pressed record told me she does cartooning uh she's a fashion designer and i'm sure even more so i want to welcome you to quantum healing with candace show hi ikramini hi hi candace so um thank you for having me and uh, for the nice introduction <laughs> uh, i'm so excited by the way and um where do you want me to start because it's uh, i'm not uh, 20 25 so <laughs> so much to say oh well, gosh okay. <laughs> well thank you so much for being here this is this is really exciting there's there's really so much that we can talk about but i guess what i would like to know is you know how did you first discover Dolores? How did you first get into this particular work? Uh, 
okay, so this um, this goes back to the um, to the spiritual journey I have made in my life. Um, actually, I am a very spiritual person, but I didn't know. I didn't know that I am. So I was uh, always focusing on such. But it is, you know, in, in my early age, I was born in Iraq, in Baghdad. And uh, in that environment, we we have it. We think it's a religion. It's, it's religion. It's not, re it's not spiritual. So we, we, we put everything which is a spiritual in a re religion. And then I think it's uh, there is a big difference because there are so many uh, um, spiritual uh, techniques or spiritual beliefs and well spiritual is not belief it's something in, in each uh, and every one of us and religion is something you uh, you just inherit from your family and from your culture mm -hmm. so it there's a big difference so i think after a while when i started to uh, understand the difference i knew that i am a very spiritual person because i found myself looking for masters and gurus and um, in all, in, from all religions, by the way, not only from Islamic uh, uh, part, all religions. I wanted to know there is some um, lacking part I wanted to know about. And um, of course, when you are interested in things and you are ambition, ambitious person, you go after one after another. And then I found Dolores, uh, fortunately, and I got so interested in her, through her U YouTube's, and I started to read about her, uh, some of her qu uh, books. And then, luckily. I um, really met her before she passed away and I got the uh, technique with her. That's amazing. So when did you meet Dolores and when did you take the initial That's training? Where was that? Where was that? Uh, 13, mm -hmm. 13, mm -hmm. 13, 20, 12, 13. I'm not, not so sure. I have mm -hmm. to go back again to the, mm -hmm. <laughs> to the dates, but I think it's 13. Yep. Well, I have you as, you know, being a part of our group, Dolores's original support forum group since 2013. So it had to have been around that time or maybe slightly before then. So where did you take the class with her? Uh, it is 13, but, uh, but I, before that, I, I think uh, two years I was following her uh -huh. uh, the books, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm not so sure when. Sure. Uh, the books and the YouTube, and I went so much into her that she really occupied all my interest at, the, at that, uh, this, the, that period. So mm -hmm. um, then I decided to go to, to the course. Mm -hmm. So uh, where was the course located when you... It was in, uh, in England. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So, um, how how did your background um, mesh with some of the material and teachings that Dolores was, um, you know, giving to the class and talking about? I mean, obviously, you said you'd been following her and reading her books, but um, you know, there there's quite quite a reach from from your origins, I would think, with some different concepts, etc. I'm I'm really interested in how you integrated some of that and. And, and some of the thoughts you might have had about it at the time. Um, if you go, this, I think this goes on everything. If you go so um, fanatic, then you will find that uh, there are differences. But if you go to the essence, to the, to the essence of uh, each religion, you will find that they are the same. And what she is talking about and what her books were uh, really telling about I don't. I couldn't see any difference. It was really as if she was talking from my religion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you 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 need to be a little open and uh, take things um, in, in a wider in a wider horizon. You mm -hmm. take them as a as a that they are coming from the same source. Then everything goes well. Mm -hmm. So when she, I didn't see any contradiction between what she wrote, what she said, with what we with, with what I believe. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I really feel the same way too. I mean, if you look, if you just back up a little bit from perspectives, you know, we, you know, across the world have a whole lot more similarities than we do differences. Exactly. Yeah, and, you, and you're a person of the world. So how old were you when you left um, Iraq and ended up over in uh, Europe and in Sweden finally? Well, I uh, came in um, 39. Mm -hmm. 39. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So you're 39 years old and then you learned. A whole... No, not now. Not, I am. Uh, I am being when I came. I yes. Was 39, so it is eight years. Yes. So now I am end of 40s. I am leaving the 40s. Right. I'm changing very newly in December. I'm changing to 50. So you you had to start learning new languages later on in life, which I'm always so impressed with. All you know, all I've got is this English. So. <laughs> 
but you know the basic yes <laughs> the basic yeah, yes so I, you don't need it. I learned uh, german when i was uh, 30 uh, in university because i like uh, learning uh, languages mm -hmm. and i was intending to go to the to french but uh, the war uh, went up yes. and then um, unfortunately i couldn't go but then uh, the swedish mm -hmm. so Oh gosh, well that's just great. So now you practice Dolores's method in more than just one area of the world. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Because that's that's pretty unique. You travel and you do this work in in various areas. Yes, that's true. Um, well, be before I go uh, to that place, let me give some like highlight some points sure. about the technique. Um, from my perspective and from my experience, I've been doing it for a long while, and uh, I think it is it might not fit everyone. And I think this is the mm -hmm. case of every technique, every healing technique. Mm -hmm. It does not go to everyone because we are different, and so our uh, our acceptance to what comes is also different. Um, one. I, I have had a, a client, she has uh, made a session with me and then after a short while she called me and she said, I want to have um, a session, I want a book session to my husband as a birthday, birthday, uh, in his birthday, uh, like, a, like a present. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work this way. You, you have to have, um, you must come here willing to take this session. You have to be convinced to take it. So it, it, it's not... Um, it's not a, a relaxation session or it's a entertainment. It's a session with a mission. You are you are really contacting the higher soul of yours. I I don't I don't really want to focus on the name because the, the mm -hmm. sky is the limit for the names. So yes. the subconscious, the higher soul, the main soul. Because when I converted the text to uh, Arabic, I had to make some modifications. So many times I had modified it many times until I really started to feel, okay, this is working and mm -hmm. this can get results. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, um, I have traveled to Jordan and to uh, Emirates for sessions and they were really amazing, that, amazing. That's great. Why don't you tell us about some of your favorite sessions over the years? Um, some great um, healing sessions or great stories? What are some, what are some of the highlights, um, ones that you refer to or, or were memorable uh, for you? Well, um, you know, each session has its own um, individual or nature. Yeah. So uh, they are all, for me, I, I think all of them are very successful. Uh, even those who left and they told me by the eye that they were not uh, satisfied, actually they were um, they were preparing questions. From my perspective, they are not very realistic. For example, one of the mostly the young people are very they have very high expectations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, one one young man he brought uh, eighty four questions. And he was asking that his bank account jumps into seven numbers. Oh my! And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and I said, "Why do you need this?" And one of them was, wanted to have five languages when he leaves. And he wanted German, uh, Spanish, uh, French, Russian, and Chinese, in addition to <laughs> a very good English. <laughs> so. You know, so we, these, these questions come from our rational mind, which is very limited. Because I ask him, why on earth do you want these things? Why do you want to learn all these things? Where do you want to use them? Yeah, so um, some expectations, if they are not really realistic, of course the session doesn't work this way. You are contacting the higher soul of yours, which is part of you, the, the vast, the very powerful part of your mind, which is covered by our noisy, the Dolores say, says always Mr. Monkey, who is covering it by our, uh, this, this monkey mind, it's, it covers that area. So we are asking through the session, um, we are asking this part to, you know, in a friendly way, not by, uh, not by opposing it or being um, against it. We ask it in a friendly way to subside so that we can listen to the messages in the, in the real place where we have all the answers and all the healings. So mm -hmm. one, let me give you some, because you asked about the, um, the example, the nice examples. I remember once uh, I had a, 
a session with a lady, she was uh, diagnosed um, liver cancer, uh, and she was, uh, of course, she was uh, also scheduled as uh, hemotherapy, and she was very afraid, very, very afraid. She came to me and she said, well, this is the last chance. And actually, um, we, we went to, through a very tough session because she was really jumping on the, on the bed in a, in a way that I really didn't know what to do at that time. <laughs> Gosh, yes. <laughs> she, she was really um, a big, big person. And I thought maybe she can hurt herself when doing that. But when we finished and we, she came back again to the normal uh, state of mind, uh, after 22 days exactly, uh, she contacted me and she said uh, it wasn't cancer, it was a blood clot. Oh my, oh my. She bought flowers with her friends and where they were really crying. I was also crying because I couldn't believe. But she was very sure that it was cancer in her liver. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, one else, um, um, a relative of mine, she's young, 23 years old, and she had uh, she was diabetic since three years old, a child uh, problem. And uh, after two sessions, she started to have, um, you know, she started to vomit and nausea and so many complications in her state. And then she started, to, she was afraid to leave. Of course, the subconscious told her, do this, do this, do this, do this, and stop the insulin. And she was afraid to leave it because 20, you know, 20 years, she sure. was... Yes, it's like something that you have to do with every day, even without thinking. And when she stopped it, of course, she uh, is now on the on a diet, but she doesn't need any insulin. Oh. And this was a big, huge success in, in the family because mm -hmm. we all were, you know, we have passion to her and we were emotionally very uh, cooperating with her. Mm -hmm. Um. um Another one, she was uh, also a friend, and she is also a practitioner with us. She was with me in uh, in uh, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and uh, she didn't have child for seven years, and we switched uh, uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. And she, after that, after three months, she called me, and she she was expecting a child. And after she, now we have sent, she sends me the videos of her baby. She's a girl. After seven <laughs> years. <laughs> After seven years, and she got a child. That's amazing. And of course, when you say these things, people cannot understand it. They say, but she, because she understands the, the technique, so she really was very eager to take it uh, mm -hmm. seriously. Right, right. Yeah, and so many, so many others, but um, these are what pops up in the mind. Some, some really great stories. Do you mind sharing how you felt when you had a session? What, you know, what was that like? Was it what you expected? Uh-huh, yeah. You said you swapped sessions. I have so many, actually. The first, the first one, I took it before I come to, uh, to meet oh. Dolores, mm -hmm. just to see what is, what is happening. I, I remember I asked her, but I am aware. I am aware. I didn't right? go away, so, you, so I myself, so that's why I understand the clients when they come. And that's why I also tell them that they will not be traveling outside the, the country. <laughs> they will be here on, <laughs> on the bed and yeah. they will be only talking like, it's only, mm -hmm. I just send them to a, a very relaxed state of being so that they can receive the, mes the messages from the real soul, not from the junky monkey. Yes on the surface. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, you know, I, I was lucky enough to um, have a session with Dolores myself. And um, one of the first things she asked when I sat up was, um, you know, well, what do you remember? And I said, well, I remember everything. And yeah. um, she actually, so this was, you know, this was quite a while ago. This was two, 2008. And um, I remember in class that that was that was a little bit of a uh, challenge to Dolores uh, to say that she actually went, oh no, I'm sure you don't remember as much as you think, and I was bad. I actually said, 
try me. I mean, I remember everything. It was amazing. And it was, and Dolores still at that time, and, and of course she's our amazing teacher and, and everything is, and she's changed, she changed the world, you know, let's, let's face it. She's changed the world. So, uh, but, but I, you know, I've come to learn my place in, in the legacy that is Dolores Cannon. And so there was a part of me that was poking her a little bit saying, wait a second, you know, so if I remembered everything, does that mean it didn't work or that we did it wrong or that I did it wrong or whatever? And when we first put together, you know, this the support forum with Dolores's approval and help, of course, um, at first, all we really had was a bunch of people and we would share uh, notes. And, and we thought for a while, uh, probably for about a year, we're like, well, we must be doing something wrong or Dolores must be way better at this than us, or maybe only she can do it and we can't. But um, mo you know, many of us, of course, myself included, just persevered. I just kept doing the work and I kept asking questions. And it, it is quite clear, it became quite clear that we weren't doing anything wrong at all. Uh, to Dolores's um, credit, I will and should say, when she first started doing this, the majority of people would not remember. But this is when she first started. So this is back, 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 you know, in, in other day, in other, in a kind of another time, right? When we, Dolores was far before her time. Let's just, you know, let's admit that right now. She was way before her time. And the first people that she kind of got to be her guinea pigs were just basically people who she could get to lay down <laughs> and and practice on. There weren't people, there weren't a whole lot of people at first coming, beating down her door, waiting for, you know, in the end, years to have a session with her. At first, it wasn't like that. And at first, the majority of people, not everybody, but the majority of people would not remember. So she kind of, um, she kind of held on to that and repeated that over the years, but it, you know, towards the end in classes, when I was assisting her and other times, you know, on our forum, she started to say, you know, things are changing. We as humans are closer to that bigger part of ourselves. Uh, we don't have to check out completely anymore. You know, uh, some people still do, uh, but it's a smaller percentage of people who don't remember what's going on, who aren't aware of what's going on. But it's far more like a daydream or a dream. And in that way, it's similar because while it's going on, you remember it all and you think you remember it all, but you know, ask yourself tomorrow or next week if you remember and you kind of go, well, I don't know, you know, unless you wrote some things down or you repeated it or whatever, it can be very dreamlike, but that doesn't mean it didn't work. It doesn't mean you didn't have success. It doesn't mean any of that. And as a matter of fact, it was probably sometime about the time when you've joined our community that uh, and it took me a while to get Dolores to agree to do it but we actually did a small YouTube video it's been seen I think just about 30,000 times but Dolores and I combined forces and we did a, um, a, a video about expectations um, you know and remembering things like uh, I mean and, and talking about things like remembering your session you know, she said, I don't know if you'll remember or not. I mean, some people do, some people don't. And she also talked about high expectations. And that was pretty funny, the one that you said the guy wanted to know all those languages. Languages, yeah. I said, why Russian? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Do you mind telling, did he have a good connection with his higher self or his higher being? What, what was some of the answers to asking this question? Oh, it, it, this was one of 80 four questions yeah i remember the question <laughs> because i remember i it took me more than 40 minutes just to go through the questions because you see sometimes i have to discuss with him sure what type of uh, how to ask it because i would be the one who would be asking so i have to understand why is he asking these questions and most of them uh, the seven digit numbers of the bank account and the ferrari i want a ferrari <laughs> and the, uh, <laughs> ferrari Lamborghini and what else? Porsche. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you see, so this piece comes, from, and I was, of course, I remember, I remember very well what I said. I said, I think I am not the goal. 
uh, Aladdin uh, lamp. Yes. So you have to go and find one. <laughs> of course, if you go to your subconscious or the higher soul, it can, such mir miracles can happen because it is the source of the source. Yep. But if, sometimes we ask for things which may be open doors for challenges to us. They are not necessary to us. Right. Why do we ask for them? Why? Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. you go to, to somewhere where it brings you problems. Mm -hmm. because But our mind thinks the money and the fame. No. It, it, maybe this is not your, your journey. It's mm -hmm. not part of your journey. Maybe mm -hmm. your journey should be only a simple person. But this simple person is very important in the, in the whole picture of the universe. Yeah. So I also talk about these things. Some, some of uh, the clients, they really, I remember very well, uh, a big part of the, of the uh, questions were were uh, skipped because when we discuss, they see it's not, not necessary to ask this question. <laughs> right. Well, believe me, believe me. And then we end up into small things about mm -hmm. health and about some some uh, general things mm -hmm. to understand who I am, what's my mission on the earth. These are small tips that we really need from the life. They become not so important when you understand that you're you are here for a journey. To, to to fulfill the whole picture of the universe. Yes. The whole picture. We are important in the whole, but maybe it's not important for me now, but we are important when the, the whole picture is finished. Mm -hmm. I remember, that's a lot of questions. I think the most questions I ever had somebody bring, um, it was pages and pages and I, and, uh, I, and I looked at the end and it was, it was close to 300. And I remember thinking, and, and so this is what I, what I try to tell clients. I said, you know what? You can bring as many questions as you want, as many as you want, but put them in the order that they're important to you because we don't know how many we'll get to. And, and Dolores, when I, you know, I was just the, um, uh, the demonstration subject in, in the class. So it was actually an abbreviated session. It was a little shorter than what most sessions might be. She, she put a limit on how many questions I could ask during my <laughs> session. It was three. I could ask three questions only. And, and what's really, really fascinating, Erkmini, is... Um, how the session that I had with Dolores back in 2008 has different levels of understanding, importance, and um, information coming through, even, even today, even eight years later. It was amazing to begin with. Uh, it provided answers and um, information on one level even then, and over time it has provided more information and even in this last year or so, when there's been so many changes on the planet, um, in my own personal life and, and changes uh, doing this method, and then of course, you know, the changes that have happened since Dolores' is passing, my session just gets deeper uh, and more important and more significant. And there are things that happened in it that make more sense now. And I just find that incredible. And our, our friend, Laura Casto, the amazing Laura Casto, who had such a, you know, a significant and, and, and miraculous um, uh, physical healing from being at death's door to to coming around and um, and being healthy now and, and walking the planet and doing this work. Um, she's listened to her session so many times, uh, you know, close to, I think, 400 times now. And, and she says she still will occasionally hear something in a new way, even now, even after all of these years, that, that's significant. And she, she likes to sit in the energy of the session that brought her all of the changes in her life. And it reaffirms and re, uh, reconnects herself to that higher uh, part of herself that allows herself to stay connected to it. So many of our clients, uh, and you tell me about yours, but many of our clients, you know, we can't make anyone do anything. But when they come to do this session, we record the session. And we give them a recording, usually an audio recording. Some of us out there are doing video recordings, but usually an audio recording. And then we ask the people to listen to that um, and, and maybe listen more than once. And particularly if they're for healing, you know, to sit in that energy a, a little bit more. But uh, not all of our clients are compliant to that. What have you found, Erkamini? Yeah, exactly. exactly. That is also... <laughs> Sometimes I say, and I repeat before mm -hmm. they leave, 
I repeat, please, uh, when you make any contract with any organization or institution, you have uh, terms and conditions. And this healing has terms and conditions. And the most important is that you repeat the, because not only the words that are coming from these, these messages, not coming from this higher soul. Sometimes I, I think this because I believe also the, the silence between the words is also important because the healing, we, we understand it because we only hear the words. Healing has nothing to do with, with it. it's it's energy. Yes. And sometimes the silence also has energy. And not yes. all the time. So you have to to listen even when you are silent in that recording. All the recording from yes. zero from A to Z, you have to listen yes. as long as you repeat it, as long as you are getting yes. more, gaining more, gaining more. Yes. So I always and I by the way, I follow, I call my clients. How was it? How do you feel? Mostly, I do that. Mostly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't do it with relatives, but <laughs> but the uh, the normal clients I I follow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, I, I think that you make a significant point there about silence. I know one of my own very memorable sessions that um, I've, I've referenced over the years was a woman who, um, after we started the session, she, you know, and we talk about this, you know, we take you to a beautiful place and from that beautiful place you end up on a cloud and then the cloud takes you to where you need to go. And she talked to me just a little bit about the beautiful place, but she was very tight lipped. I mean, literally like this. And even when, I mean, you know, even the lips went white and, and I asked her about, you know, the beautiful place and, and she says, well, I guess I'm at a stream and I guess there's some woods, but I mean, but she was like, you know, really, uh, kind of fighting it. And I'm like, oh boy, where, you know, where are we going here? But, um, and then, you know, I did the rest of the induction and the cloud took her to the place and she didn't say another word. I mean, not one word after that. And, you know, Dolores is brilliant. You know, she, she would say, get the client to talk. Well, I, I used every trick in the book that I knew that Dolores taught that I could, you know, even think of to get the client to talk. Client never said another word, not one other word and so i just kind of talked and i talked in a big general way about some of the things that we hear the you know the higher self or the soul self say about um you know going inside um asking for higher guidance you know just uh, but i would you know and i gave her a chance to talk but she really never said anything but uh i saw some you know a little bit of tear action um on the eyes and when it was over, she didn't have much to say either. And I'm like, you know, when it was over, I thought, you know, I, I really didn't know what else to say either. But this woman was, um, this woman was quite elderly. She came from a, from a abusive background, both as a child and as a wife and mother. And, you know, she was beaten into silence um, her whole life. It was, it was quite hard for her to speak about anything at all, a grocery list probably. But um, in the end, uh, even though she was, um, I, I'm not remembering her age, but I, I believe in her in her 70s um, okay. or, or even even in her early 80s. I okay. think she might have been, I mean, she was, she was yes, she was, she was in the later stages of her life and she left her husband mm -hmm. and she went out and made herself a new life. I mean, within weeks of our session, you know, I remember asking her during our interview session, you know, what can you, what would you imagine um, a, a, a life that you would want to live? What does that look like? And I remember her saying, I just want to be left alone. You know, I mean, her father beat her, abused her, her husband beat her, abused her, all of that. She's like, I just want to be left alone. I just, I just want to be alone. Wow. And I didn't, you know, we never really know what's going to happen after a session, but I, I was able to find out in the end that this woman, even though she'd never been uh, out of control of a, a, you know, her father or husband 
for you know eight decades she she moved out and i don't know how long she had or has but became independent uh, for the first time in her entire life probably just lived in a little apartment on her you know on her social security or whatever but she was making a new beginning for her finally achieving what she had wanted for that entire life which was just simply to be left alone wow you see when i was really it's very interesting for me to, uh, to listen to the story because it's um sometimes we get some changes but we do not refer for a certain reason why did they happen and um, for this session after one week as you say what after one week it, it means that it has made a big impact on her life mm -hmm. but uh, the good thing is that you watch your, your yes. life and you see the changes yes because sometimes we we don't admit we don't say ah it was because of the session but there are things that because of the session are happening <laughs> yes we don't admit you know we yes. want somebody who is telling money you see this has happened because we want it exactly sometimes it doesn't happen exactly but it happens yes. there is something happening there is a change but we don't know it it, it happens to what fits you yes it goes to exactly to what fits you the universe is very intelligent to give you exactly what what you need yes absolutely yes and and sometimes you know i i talk about this there's a continuum you know there are things that happen in sessions that are just jaw-dropping i mean absolutely jaw-dropping obvious amazing miraculous whatever you want to talk about and then there's some sessions where you know people go well that was interesting and you don't quite know it's not very obvious what happens but i don't know about you but i have uh you know people uh, some clients will contact me then you know a year even two years later and say you know I didn't think much happened during the session, but let me tell you something. And then they'll fill in the blanks. They'll they'll say this led to this, yeah. meant this, and then this. And and Dolores always taught us that whatever happens in a session is perfect and exactly correct. What's going to happen right then yeah. and there? Of course, she kind of set the bar high though by writing those books because yeah. because a lot of people then come with these very high expectations. So sometimes I you know I will have the clients you know review that that um, videotape that Dolores and I did about high expectations, and and I guarantee you, and I I'm not. Um, I'm not at all loath or afraid to say this. Dolores, you know, really, she didn't at first want to make this video at all. And I said, but Dolores, these people are coming to you, your practitioners, and they have these giant, huge expectations. They want these cosmic adventures. They think simply by, you know, that, that they're absolutely going to go to the planet, whatever. They're absolutely going to do this, and they're absolutely going to get all their Ferraris and whatever and be healed instantly. And, you know, sometimes, gosh, sometimes that does happen. It depends on if, you know, that's part of your purpose and you're aligning that way. And sometimes it happens right away, and sometimes it happens later, and sometimes it doesn't happen at all because it's not for your best good. And this is just your conscious mind thinking that's what you want. Perfect. You are yeah. just saying exactly what it is, <laughs> and I, I really say it also to my client because I I learned from the experience that this should be said and should this should be uh, informed. I, I must inform them about this so that they do not come back again. It's not that I am I am uh, I'm avoiding the discussion. No, mm -hmm. I want to, because I, I myself want to see if this is doing well or not. Mm -hmm. I really want to have a real result. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I have to understand, they have to understand that sometimes the change is not for them. And sometimes it happens after a while. It's not good now, but it can happen a while. But mm -hmm. it can happen another way, in another form. It can take another form mm -hmm. that they cannot say, oh, it was because of uh, the session. Mm -hmm. It happened. I, I asked this and I wanted Ferrari and it, I, <laughs> I got Lamborghini. <laughs> You see, you understand? So yeah. it is sometimes the time, time it, it takes time. Sometimes it it happens, but it happens in another form. Sometimes it, as you said, doesn't happen because mm -hmm. it's not for not good mm -hmm. for you. Right. It's not along your journey in this time. Mm -hmm. It's not in your journey. One yeah. of the other things that I've noticed that happens, and so um, you know, a lot of 
clients have come and they've tried other things. So you get some clients who've never tried anything like this, like, you know, my lady who, you know, said nothing. Believe me, I know she never tried anything at all like this. Right. But there are some clients who show up and they've, you know, they've done the circuit. They've done right. this thing and that thing and this thing and that thing. And sometimes those clients, um, you know, they, they, their expectations are a little different and sometimes I think almost a little harder to deal with because, you know, they, uh, it's as if they've tried a, a hundred ways to achieve some of the same things. And this was 101 and, and they expect it to be, you know, uh, monumentally different than the other hundred. And sometimes, and sometimes it is really, truly, sometimes it is, but sometimes it's just, they just want confirmation and it's yeah. just a repetition of the things that they've already learned doing some of these other things, yeah. these other meditations or these other experiences or these other consciousness explorations. And sometimes that's a little tough. And what I say, look, you know, it, this is confirming that the work you've done has been correct, you know, and, and so your conscious mind, your conscious mind can't force anything. It's not going to force a thing at all. And so, you, you know, you really never know what's going to happen. But sometimes if coming and having a QHHT session is, you know, a hundred and, and, and first thing that you tried and, and nothing happened and then they go try and I don't even know, you know, method X, Y, Z down the road in a couple of weeks. Maybe what happened in the QHHT session open finally cracked the door right. that allowed them to, when they do XYZ method in a couple of weeks, to let that then method be the thing that brings them the peace or the healing or the understanding or whatever. Maybe this is just another step on the journey and, and it's another dot that's connected so that you can finally get to that place. So I always say, you know, there's no knives, there's no surgery, there's no coming back every week for five years. Like, you know, this is, this is an afternoon of exploration and it can be, um, you know, monumental um, immediately or later, or it may be just another step in your journey, but you just have to be open to whatever it is that, that happens. And if you have some sort of idea that it needs to, you know, contain certain elements to be yeah. considered successful. That's a tough place for us as practitioners to be in, right? Because we don't do anything except for right. kind of hold the hand. Exactly. Just facilitate. Yeah, yeah. that's true. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, um, in my, in my, um, from my experience, because I am dealing with two types of clients because I, I deal with Arabs mm -hmm. and the European, mm -hmm. but we all, I mean, with the European, we speak English because mm -hmm. uh, different nationalities and with the Arabs, of course, I, I do it in Arabic. Uh, the, the thing is that um, I, I haven't announced in my website about this QHHT. So I, people who come to me, mostly are from the uh, Dolores site and mostly are European. So they come to me, so those who come to me through, through Dolores site, they have read some books, they have uh, seen some YouTubes. Mm -hmm. The Arabs, they come by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I have done it so, so, to some friends mm -hmm. and they started to see. And so mm -hmm. they come through this. In, in their case, all the Arabs, I have to talk a lot to, to, it's not educate because it's not a nice word to say I right. educate you, but I have to to tell you a lot before we start because I have to make like a summary for all what I mm -hmm. should what Dolores has said and I must do it in, in a in a you know in a cultural way yes take in consideration so many other aspects then I make it like a a budget and then I, I, I say it to them uh -huh. and uh, believe me. Uh, I am really getting very good number from, uh, with, from Arabs and they are recommending husbands too. So mostly they were women. Mm -hmm. Now they are recommending now on the 22nd of uh, August, I have a man, he is a husband of a woman, a wife. She came to me and she liked the idea. She liked the, even she didn't have really, really a uh, very big problem, not health problem or, or major problems, some, some s s simple things of life. But she went into that uh, that 
tranquility. Mm-hmm. She she sensed it, mm-hmm. and so she uh, and maybe her husband is passing through some some uh, some stuff in his life. So she called me. She said, "I I wanted to come to you." I said, "No, he must call me." Excellent. I not take it from you. He must call me, please. Excellent. I can. I, I if you come, you can come again. But he must call me, mm-hmm. and he did, and we uh, booked a day. That's that's amazing. I, I I'd like to talk more about that. You know, I want to I want to throw something out there for you right now. Remember the lady the the lady in her eighties who came yes. to see me. Do you know that her husband made the appointment? Her oh. her abuser made the appointment and he just wanted to fix her because she'd had a injured back. So he was sending her to me to get her fixed because they had tried everything medically. And I said to him, you know, exactly what you said. Normally people call me directly and and he's like, well, she doesn't use the computer and uh, my daughter wants a session too. And, and anyway, long story short, I, I'm with you. I want to talk with them. And, and normally I, I put up my hands. But in the end, I mean, when she sat down and started telling me a little bit about her life, and I said, but he made the session. Did he not think you would talk to me about this? She said, I don't know what he thought. So I think he thought he had such control of her even then that she wasn't going to tell me anything like that, that we were just going to fix her back oh, okay. so that, you know, so she, the magic, uh, magical one. right, right, right. So, <laughs> and so, you know, let's just say the outcome really surprised him, but I love that fact. I, uh, you know, the, the idea that you are doing this in, in two vastly different cultures yes. is just amazing. And we do have practitioners in, in that area of the world. And it's, you know, it's a different game. It's a different way of looking at it. But in the end, it is consciousness exploration. And in the end, you have to take each person individually, what what their thoughts are, what their goals are, what what they're trying to achieve. and that's what I love so much about Dolores's method. It can work on anything for anybody, anywhere at all, with no exceptions, with, you know, for whatever it is that's going on. And I, you know, I said it even when she was alive, but I'm saying it even more now that she's passed. I think we've only just scratched the surface of what is really, really possible here. More and more things are, you know, even in the expansive place that Dolores Cannon brought to us, it, you know, uh, with this method, it's expanding even more, and 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 more I think is possible, and more that than maybe we even understand or realize. I really truly believe that Dolores Cannon changed the world, and the work that we do together, and simply even having this conversation here, I think expands that energy outward. And then when we put it on YouTube like this, and other people will share it, um, it just builds and builds and makes more and more possible. It makes us more and more powerful and makes more things, um, you know, available to us, more things real and possible and, and in faster ways, you know, and, and yet in some ways too, you know, there are basic things like, you know, when you talk about your man with the languages and the cars, which is still just hysterical. I have to, I don't, I've never had anyone kind of, kind of uh, ask those kinds like you. Ask those kinds of questions. <laughs> he left and he said, I am a little disappointed. I did. <laughs> did he expect his Ferrari to be outside parked in the street? No, I, was, uh, I didn't want him. Of course, I don't charge anyone who, who uh, gives me the impression that he didn't get anything because it's not a matter of money. It's, I really sure. want to be of, of, uh, to make some change. Sure. I, I really want to be a reason to change. Yes. A good change. Yep. So if he doesn't like it, if he yep. then it's not a, you can you can be yeah as you are. Yep. But uh, I explained to him that what he wants might be of his bad. Yes. Maybe he he gets challenge. Maybe he gets more challenges if he gets Ferrari and Lamborghini. And right. Right. We don't know what happens. Maybe he gets killed by them. We don't know. Yeah. So yeah. It's not good that you ask, but it's not mean. It doesn't mean that those who have them. They are in danger. No, it means that it is not for you, simply. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty interesting. You, you know, a lot of things um, can make sense after having a session that se- that a lot of things that seemed important 
um, going in, um, in, in some of the better sessions when people wake up, they, you know, they kind of realize what's important, but you know, you just never know. I mean, as practitioners, we have people show up and we, so, you know, we think, well, you know, what's going to happen here? Or we may remember similar situations or similar clients. And, and we just really don't know what's going to happen. I, I have a very memorable session where I remember a man sat down and he was telling me about his marriage. And this was, I mean, it was, you know, uh, they called the cops on each other. They were always in fights. There was, I mean, it was just drama and it just, all he was focused on was, you know, what was wrong and, and how, how uncomfortable and crazy this was, you know, and from the outside, almost anybody listening to him describe his marriage and, and especially if, if, if somebody was watching me, the, you know, the, the, the facilitator listening to this, you would think, well, you know, maybe these people don't belong together and you just kind of, you know, maybe, you know, but I always, you know, I, I, I withhold any sort of judgment because you never know what's going to go on in these sessions. And this man had the, the most amazing session that absolutely turned all of that on the head and his higher self said no they belong together they love each other that their souls have needed this with each other and this and explained everything and you could have knocked i think both of us over with a feather when it was all over you know i just was like well that was amazing and he left thinking and saying and feeling completely different about his wife um and he went back because he changed things in himself yeah. he except, except, um, he you know his marriage changed and things got you know better in in a in a hurry and um and it was a very unexpected and i think that's what i love about this i mean because you know, imagine what, what a lot of traditional therapy is going on out there. They may have taken the two people to a marriage therapist. They may go two or three times a week for a year and they'd be fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and wow, wow. And maybe it would help. I mean, sure. But, you know, come on. We know these things kind of. Yeah. So, right. But, but this took, you know, took all of that personality away and allowed the higher self to go, well, maybe you should consider this, this, and this, and how this and this and this works. And I mean, he sat up out of that session and it was just like, wow. And for me too, you know, and um, this person is, uh, you know, I, I, not certain, not a friend, but I, in, in the local area I at times see this person and you know they're he's still got a strong marriage it's been several years and oh, you just you might not have thought of it looking at the police record <laughs> but now you know interesting interesting, interesting. Yeah, so interesting. well um you know we're coming down towards the end of end of our time together today but i have, i have a question about all of uh, all of the different things and all of the different uh, 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 projects and, and, and talents that you have. So, and how maybe some of those cross you've sent me and, and I'll reference this and maybe put a little clip in of a fashion show. You just came back from London doing. And one of the first things that was said in the video was that, that these designs are based upon stories and tales and storytelling. And, you know, quantum healing hypnosis is anything, if not storytelling. And then you're telling me you do cartoons for children. How do all of these different things combine and feed and reinforce each other in your life? I think it's not, uh, for me, I think um, it's exactly like Dolores said, but maybe I will say it in another way. Mm -hmm. From my understanding is that we have one mind, two parts. The biggest mind, which has everything, which can lead you to be everything, anything you want. And it is covered, it's covered by a block, which is called the monkey mind, which is the rational, the analytical. If you managed to, to at least take this away, for at least a while in it, uh, among the day, not the whole day. Of course, the thinking is always there. But if you just manage to take it away, this will 
really show you miracles. And the inspiration can come to you, uh, not only art, it can come even as um, equations because I am an electronic engineer. If I focus on my engineering uh, part, I may maybe discover something in, in electric, electric <laughs> electronics, but uh, I'm really, my passion is so much with art and colors and creative by my hands. And so uh, when I allow this, so the inspiration comes also in this, in this area. So I have the creation of um, the story because I, I write stories from 1000 and night, from, uh, from so many epics when I was a child father is a lawyer and he had big big room only for books and in, in a library a big library so I was really trying to read so much as I can but of course I forgot everything but it seems that they are there so the the inspiration is only just uh, pop, popping them up into, uh -huh. into my, so I just write them and then I have this uh, drive to make them as a cartoon so, uh, and the cartoon is always with designs and addresses. So I put this in this. <laughs> I think engineering, engineering is important. As my dad, my dad was always saying, be engineer and you can and go and succeed in everything. Engineering is not only as, as a profession. It is, it, it gives you the balance. It gives you um, the ability to make things happen because you become rational in a, in a creative way. So if you are a creative and engineer, I don't think they are contradicting each other. They are really supporting each other. Mm -hmm. So um, as an engineer, I am supporting all the creativity or the art together. So I think it's, uh, when you say it's um, these different, I think they are one. I, I think they are one. The cartoon is also um, art. Mm -hmm. It's art for the mind. And uh, <laughs> the designs is also... But this London, what you saw, this uh, link, uh, I joined actually um, without, I really left my um, concept because I always make a story and from the story I pass a fashion design. Mm -hmm. So um, I couldn't make it because this, the time was so short for me. I couldn't make a story and the cast of characters and theater and music. So I just showed the designs. Uh, on November, this November, I will be having a fashion show with the story in Dubai. So I'm taking the whole crew to Dubai now with me. Oh my gosh. Well, you'll have to let us know how that works. You, well, you are when, when invited, right? Oh gosh, how amazing. The first on the, on the list. Oh gosh, thank you. Oh, well, we're coming down to the to the end of our time together. This has been so enjoyable, especially, you know, I've, I've enjoyed getting to know you after seeing your name for, for so many years on our support forum and, and know how creative you are. And, you know, I, I mean, I, it didn't compute to me your, your art and creative background until we just started talking recently. And, and that, of course, is my background, too. And and um, I, I really want to get back into it. But um um, I love that that you know it's all the same it, it's it's really all the same it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what it is we as humans we love to compartmentalize and label things and and sometimes it just doesn't work like that but um, this has been such a joy um, would you come back and talk to me a little bit more you know I, I'm particularly interested in the whole um, sort of um, you know uh, the the sessions that you do it, you know, in the in the Arabic, and 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 with that culture, and the it's so different from what we're used to hearing about, and and knowing and hearing how that kind of works, and that it's oh, you know, that it is happening in that world is just fascinating to me. Um, not only as um, a human, but as somebody who's been supporting Dolores's method all across the world. Um, this is so exciting to me and it's so gratifying to me that we have people like you practicing there in a, in a way that's acceptable to, um, you know, hopefully m more people over time than, e than even now. But I'd love to have you come back and tell us a little bit more about that. And um, before I ask um, you how to, uh, people can find you, I, I want those people who are listening right now to know that you can find a practitioner in your area of the world. We have beautiful photo listings um, on our 
uh, companion public site that supports Dolores's original support forum, and that is DoloresCannonQHHT.com. All together, DoloresCannonQHHT.com. Or you can always get in touch with me. I'm I'm very happy to help uh, refer you on to anybody in the world who may be near you or someplace you may be traveling. So, how can clients find you, please? How would you like them to contact you or Kamini? Um, I think. Um... I have to uh, make some effort to announce through my website too <laughs> about the, for the Arabs because sure. my website is is really visited by Arabs a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and regarding the uh, site with Dolores, yes, of course. But um, I don't know if it is it, uh, you have changed some uh, something in the site. Uh, even the um, uh, the the homepage is the colors is changed. And I think yeah. So um, if you just put it, not only that they have make it easy to uh, immediately go to the practitioner i think they have to because i myself when you change i have to discover the way to go to myself so i think it, if you make it on the spot because after all they are looking for a practitioner mm -hmm. because sure. they go to dolores through the youtube and the books sure when you go to the to the site the site will not explain everything no it's only cuts about things but no. they, when they go to the to the site it means that they are at the stage of looking for a practitioner yeah so the most important thing is that you got you got just go to the practitioner quickly so yep. you, you yeah this yep. is, uh, like yeah, our uh, our particular site has you know a map and it's it's a little easier to find and it's it's really not connected with um, with the estate of uh, that's been left with Dolores Cannon but Dolores Cannon QHHT .com, I will put that uh, right up here so that you all can find that and I'll put Urkamini's uh, website or uh, you know contact information on the bottom of this YouTube as well. This has been so amazing. I've I've enjoyed this so much. Um, I, I really look forward to doing it again and congratulations on your show and the one upcoming and everything else that you're doing. You're quite a busy lady. Thank you very much. And I really, really enjoyed the same. I, I also enjoyed every moment with you. Oh, uh, me too. And sorry, I messed up the time zone thing. Gosh, I've done that more than once and I really need a secretary. So poor Urkamini <laughs> waited for me uh, this morning. You don't need, but you don't need a secretary. <laughs> but any, anyway, thank you so much. And that's all for now.